Hi, this is Victoria Nolly, and here with me again is Ms. Dr. Darren McCauley, uh, Director of the St. Andrews Sustainability Institute, and he is also a senior lecturer in the School of Geography and Sustainable Development at the University of St. Andrews. In the previous video, we discussed about fossil fuels and energy justice. And in this video, we want to focus on alternative fuels, that is renewables, and how is it connected to energy justice. But before we start, I'd like Dr. McCauley to introduce himself again. Sure, well, thank you very much for inviting me back uh, to discuss further these issues that we raised in the first video. Uh, so indeed, I would like to hopefully raise some of the experiences I've had on a number of different projects uh, both uh, in the global south and global north and I would like to obviously focus here much more on the development of alternative energies rather than the fossil fuels that we covered in the previous video. All right, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, so what is the connection? What, sh what should be, okay, you can give us a brief overview of alternative fuels and yes. how is it connected to energy justice. Yes. Uh, but before we even go into that, I'd like to mention that in the, f in the previous videos I did with Professor Hefron, we discussed in detail the meaning of energy justice, but maybe for our viewers yeah. who don't know what energy justice means, you can just tell them briefly and then you can go to the connection between energy justice and, for, and alternative fuels. Uh, happy to. So energy justice is effectively trying to get society to think about the application of human rights across the entire energy system. So whenever we think about uh, extraction all the way through uh, to waste and consumption, uh, we're thinking at each stage of that process to what extent can we make our policies, our responses to energy challenges more ethical and more just. So the connection to alternative energy is absolutely critical for uh, understanding energy justice because at the very core of energy justice is this, I guess, adopted perspective that we do need to transition away from fossil fuels. And within that context, of course, alternative energies are critical. So we're both thinking about energy justice in terms of a framework for trying to promote this transition away from fossil fuels, as well as having some sort of conceptual analytical approach for understanding the implications of this transition. Because of course, while we develop alternative fuels such as winds, such as uh, uh, wave tidal power, the full range of alternative energy sources that exist, we have to think about the inequalities that those systems are going to create in the future. Mm -hmm. So there's various estimations of around 10 to 50 trillion dollars will be spent in the next 25 years on alternative energy. And that's going to create new systems of inequalities that we need to consider and reflect upon. Okay, uh, actually you've raised an issue of inequality. Yes. Can we delve into that? What kind of inequalities are likely to be created? Yeah, so in energy justice, we often refer to three different types of inequalities. So the first is distributional inequalities. Mm -hmm. So the fact that we're going to develop alternative energies, certain countries, certain regions are obviously more equipped to exploit those various energy sources. And we haven't yet thought about the geographical inequalities that's going to exist as we develop these renewable sources. So for uh, somewhere in the north, they might they typically have greater wind uh, potential but somewhere in the south might be more solar oriented so in order to achieve an energy mix we're going to find different inequalities there um, so then we've also got procedural uh, justice concerns so how do we get people whether it be individuals companies governments to make decisions on where we should exploit these alternative energy sources and then thirdly who should we recognize as being the most affected people in society so who are going to be bearing the brunt of these inequalities? Will it be people, for example, elderly people who perhaps don't quite have the same access to a national grid because they might be in a rural location and alternative energy stereotypically are much more centered around off-grid uh, and perhaps not connected to the national grid. Perhaps that's going to be a section of society we need to reflect on in terms of our policy and legal responses. 
All right. Uh, thank you very much. And what should be the way forward when it comes to energy justice and fossil f and alternative Sorry. fuels? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I think the way forward is to embrace the fact that uh, we are going to have this major investment in alternative energies. And it's not going to be one energy source. It's going to be a multiplication of energy sources. But the critical aspect here that is the very heart of alternative energy is finding storage solutions. Because one of the problems with alternative energies is of course the intermittency of that, uh, of that source. And we need to really reflect on to what extent can we develop storage solutions for alternative energy and what sort of implications will that have for energy justice in the future is something we need to start to think about. All right, thank you very much, Darren. That marks the end of our second video on alternative fuels and energy justice. In the next video, we shall talk about energy justice from a geographical perspective. Stay tuned.